In this movie, we get to start looking at the things that make up how you create your 3D, or not your 3D, but your animations inside Anime Studio. We'll look at the tools palette over here in the left-hand corner. And if you're coming from another drawing package like Adobe Illustrator or Corel Draw or something like that, there are tools that are similar, but they do behave differently. Anime Studio does play by different rules, and virtually everything you can get done in some of those other drawing packages you can do here, but it is a little bit different and wanted to cover that. And especially if you're new to this tool set, well, let's take a look at how we create and work with things. Before we jump into the tools, one area I am going to call your attention to is the very top of the workspace area. This is a dynamic area that changes depending on the tool that you have selected over on the left. Right now, the general selection tool is picked. If I move my mouse over to that in the upper left-hand corner, a little tool tip pops up. It says select points. It's a selection tool. You can also get to it by pressing the keyboard shortcut, the letter G, on your keyboard so you don't have to keep flying around with your mouse over there. Right next to that is the translation tool, how to move things once they're selected in your scene. This sort of functions a little bit like a selection tool, but only one point at a time. Now, before we start selecting and moving things, I do want to talk about how the tool palette can be thought of just to make things easier on your brain, at least it is for me. In the tools palette, everything can be categorized into three categories. There's tools to make stuff, tools to change stuff, and tools to link stuff. So it's really easy, and as you look at the tools, if you're going, now, what is this, or how does this work? Really, they fall into those categories, and most of the tools are tools to change things. There's just a few tools to actually make something. Well, let's go ahead and select things and take a look at some of these tools. In the next section coming up, section four, we are very specifically going to go over in the drawing tools section how to make things and change things as we start building assignments with Anime Studio. Right now, what I wanted to do, however, is to go ahead and basically talk about some of the move and change tools that we'll be working with. There are some that look very similar to one another, but they behave fundamentally differently based on the selection and wanted to make sure you were aware of that. Well, with our select tool, active right now. We'll see that we've got an option over here, a checkbox at the top of the workspace area called lasso mode. This allows me when I click and drag, it draws a little red line and allows me to discontiguously or irregularly select several points or objects. I go around that, we see all the little nodes on the end, the points turn red, meaning they're selected. To deselect them, I can simply click with my mouse off of the object itself and they all fade. I can select an object just by clicking on it on the side or in the center. I can select one node at a time. I can shift click, that is hold down the shift key while I click on it to select multiple nodes all at once. So this tool is very versatile, very flexible. If you deselect lasso mode, you're confined to making your selections with a rectangular shape. Sometimes this is very useful, but many times, especially when you start working with more complicated shapes, the lasso mode is the one you'll find yourself using more than any other. So I just leave mine selected. All of these other tools over here have keyboard shortcuts, or most of them do. If I select the Translate or Move tool, and I can do that coming right over here and clicking on it directly, or as you can see by the tooltip, pressing the keyboard letter T for Translate or Move. With this tool active, look, our header up here has changed. We've got an option for Auto Weld that we'll discuss uh, later in the next movie coming out. But if I click on this object now, I can just move it. If I click off of the object, nothing deselects. Watch what happens when I click over here on the edge of this shape. Nothing. So let me go ahead and come back to our Select tool. I'm going to click off of any shape. Now nothing is selected. And if I come back to the Translation tool, I'll select that. Now when I click, it grabs the point nearest the Translation tool. So I bring this up just so you can see that there's a speedy way using the Translation tool to select one point at a time. But if you want to work with multiple points, then you will need to use the Selection tool. We've got a Magnet tool. And if I select that, we can see that we get a change here. And we've got something called Radius right here. The Magnet, when I click off of the shape, We'll see it gets a red circle around it, and it's a sphere of influence, if you will. We're right where the mouse is. That's where the greatest grab strength of the magnet is. And at the very edge of the circle, it becomes very weak. 
So if I click right here between these two shapes, I'm grabbing multiple points and I can move them all at the same time. But the further the original point is away from the magnet, the less it grabbed and move it. We have skew tools. Let me go ahead with my selection tool set up. And now I can skew this if I happen to select the object down here, the cube, and then check that skew tool. We can see that, or perspective tool. There's some very similar functions over here under the layers palette, but if I select that same look, the perspective button right here, we're going to be actually rotating the layer. Think of the layer as a sheet of paper that you're drawing all your shapes on. We can have multiple overlaying sheets of paper. So while you can skew or create perspective for one shape at a time, using the layers palette over here and selecting the same tool, you can also move everything at once. So that's where the similarity between these tools is alike, and that's also where they are different. Likewise, for fill tools, we've got selection tools here. I've got a select shape tool and a create shape tool. We've got an unfilled box. When I select that, it gets this little checkerboard pattern, lets me know it's active. I can come over and with that active, change the color of the interior. You'll notice that nothing happened when I changed that. I'll select it again. With this color selected, and that's fine. Let me move this up so you can see that, and OK. I'll now press the space bar to engage or validate that selection. I'll click off of it, and we can see that. The rest are self-explanatory camera rotation and workspace rotation. And that's really it. You'll see that all the tools we really focused on are changing stuff, not creating stuff. And again, we'll do that in our next section.